My name is uh, Bernard Kress, um, and I'm working at uh, Google X, uh, especially at the, in the Google Glass project. I've been uh, involved intensely in, in uh, uh, micro-optics uh, design and fabrication for various industries, uh, starting with um, uh, the optical data storage boom, the end of the 90s, and then going to the optical telecommunication boom uh, at the beginning of the 2000s. And we all know where this wave uh, ended with the crash of JDSU in uh, 2003. Um, then I've been more interested in sensors, uh, especially uh, rotational and uh, linear sensors uh, with companies like Siemens. Uh, and then gradually I went to displays. And uh, here I am at Google working on uh, Google Glass um, one of the first uh, see-through uh, wearable displays available uh, to the consumer market. There's many sections in head-mounted displays, there's smart glasses as we know it today with Google Glass and some other actors. There's the AR, augmented reality uh, HMD market, uh, wider field of view which existed before, especially in the defense, um, uh, defense uh, domain for um, uh, rotary wing aircrafts um, and this would be a helmet mounted display uh, implementing augmented reality and you have the VR, virtual reality uh, head mounted displays. If you want to develop um, uh, a new type of uh, device such as Google Glass which is heavily uh, involved in optics uh, you have to look into your optical toolbox and see which are the, the, best, um, the best optical elements to be used for that specific uh, new application. There are classical technologies as, um, as uh, the public version uh, of uh, Google Glass, but they're also much more intriguing uh, optical architectures uh, that are either based on uh, waveguide uh, technologies such as uh, uh, the Lumus uh, combiner, which is a cascaded uh, mirror uh, technology, the Sony uh, smart glass, which is based on a waveguide holographic, volume holographic um, approach, also used by Konica uh, Minolta. Uh, there's another version based on the waveguide microprism uh, architecture used by uh, Optinvent, a company in France. Um, they are very interesting uh, freeform, total internal reflection combiner architectures that are used by um, Imagine, Canon, um, uh, Verizon, uh, and Motorola. Uh, there are other techniques, more, um, more traditional, which have been used uh, by the defense industry uh, since many years. Uh, these are the off-axis uh, combiners with a display on the side. Uh, one of the implementation would be uh, Luster, uh, also a French company. Um, and uh, then you have the light guide based architectures with a single curved extractor. And that would be typically an Epson Moverio um, device, um, which, is, uh, which is actually a workforce for a workhorse for any uh, developer uh, of uh, specific uh, applications in the augmented reality field. So there are about five different optical technologies uh, uh, that are used right now. As I said, the waveguide uh, platform, the uh, TIR freeform platform, the uh, light guide uh, platform, uh, the free space um, combiner, off-axis combiner platform, and the on-axis uh, light guide platform, which one of the, the, the examples would be uh, Google Glass. The field of view of uh, the first version of um, Google Glass is only 15 degrees, but it's uh, very well suited for that uh, particular market of uh, smart glasses and smart eyewear. Uh, the general augmented reality market requires a much larger field of view of about 30 to 40 degrees and the VR, the virtual reality markets with Oculus uh, Rift uh, and, and Sony 
requires an even larger field of view of about 100 degrees or 150 degrees in occlusion mode. So, so we're at Google with Google Glass, we're there uh, in, right in between uh, connected glasses, which might have a limited display, one, one pixel display, one LED, or multiple LEDs, highly connected, and the AR market. So right in between, um, with about 15 degrees field of view. And uh, uh, such a device uh, is a consumer electronic device. So it has to be worn the entire day. So you're not going to use uh, Google Glass all the time. You might use Google Glass only 10% of the time. So 90% of the time, you're actually wearing it. And you want it to be forgettable. You want to forget that you're wearing Google Glass. So, so that's why we, we designed a, a very minimalistic uh, form factor and very attractive form uh, uh, industrial design uh, that can be worn along the day uh, and maybe even forgettable. You can actually wear it with uh, prescription lenses also if you have, a, if you have to correct your, your vision. Now the general um, public uh, market of course exists but has to be defined carefully and the shapes of this uh, market has to be defined carefully. Uh, so we're just at the beginning of that, uh, that boom of smart glasses and especially smart eyewear. And a lot of actors are starting to, uh, you know, uh, to flex their muscles uh, in, this, uh, in this domain. There's Google, of course, which was the first one. But there are many others, uh, smaller and larger industries.